Julia. This final announcement we've now gone live on TV so let's let everyone settle down choir you now sing who dwells in the secret place
Security Rights Group of Tahuna. Um, may I have your attention, please? The owner of Motor Vehicle AIC 4429, please, you've left your lights on. Uh, choir, we're now sing, Here is My Heart in Chibemba. The Children's Choir, A Miracle of Love. 326, 362 rather, mm -hmm. yeah, for Orchestra, the fruit of their labors, 174 CFC. Orchestra, the fruit of their labors.
now have a solo piece. Someday there will be peace. 209, near Apostolic Handbook. Choir, speak to us, O oh Lord, Lenje, Mwambe, Aswebo. Okay, have been guided to hold.
Dearly beloved District Apostle, with open and joyful hearts, we welcome you to Kabwe. Our hearts leap with joy at your presence and we are thankful to our Heavenly Father for this special blessing. We look forward to a beautiful and blessed moment in the service. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, choir who will now sing Mwambe Aswebo.
my dear brothers and sisters here at Rwangwa Congregation and all those that may be following this divine service via YouTube. Hearty welcome to this preparatory divine service to be conducted by our dear district apostle Kububa Soko. This divine service is also streaming live on New Apostolic Church official YouTube handle. The dist apostle and his entourers have arrived here at Rwangwa Congregation Ground. He is accompanied by District Apostle Helper Robert Nsamba, Area Apostle Ranford Simumbwe, and all District Rectors and Assistants from Kapiri, Kavwe, and Chivombo. This live broadcast of the Divine Service will be conducted in English and interpreted into Ichivemba at the altar. I am a Pepoya Mushilo, Yala Sendua, Muru Watch Sungu. The divine service will soon start and is scheduled to commence at 10 hours. The congregation hymns for this divine service are the opening hymn, Come He That Love the Lord, in November number 406. Number 406. Hymn of repentance, just as I am without one plea. Just as I am, which will be rendered by duet. Holy communion. And can it be that I should gain in Bemba? Saving the departed, we are going to sing sometimes, we will understand by a soloist. And in God's kingdom, I long to be. In God's kingdom. The closing, the first closing hymn will be, Let your hearts be ever joyful. We show a blessed divine service. Thank you. Orchestra, Lord, whom I carry in my heart, two six zero CHC Orchestra.
solo and choir, or come to God's altar. Isaac Chintamba. solo will sing, I have a home, a solo accompanied by the uh, organist, 4-4, four, four, triple four, if you apostolic hymn book. Thank you. 
choir and orchestra, with orchestra, Behold What Manner of Love, 137 CHC. Choir with orchestra and organist in God is our trust.
organist who now give us the interviews uh, before introducing the open hymn. brothers and sisters here at Mwango congregation, I now ask you to stand up and join in the opening hymn for the commencement of the divine service.
Let us pray. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God and our loving Father in heaven. This morning, as your children, we gather in your house. We've come to worship you. We've come to glorify your name. We've come to adore you. Because we know, Father, that you are the creator of heaven and earth. You are the creator of the visible and the invisible world. We also believe in your love, Father, which also made you to send your son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for us. And we believe in him, and we know that he will come and take us home. We believe in the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we believe that the Holy Spirit is preparing us for the return of your son, Jesus Christ. So thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the protection. Thank you for the blessings. And thank you for the great future that has been prepared for us. Our desire is that when this great future comes to pass, we should be part of it. But for us to be there, we have to overcome. And that is why we've come in your house, Father, that we can be taught by you so that we can change and attain the nature and character of your son, Jesus Christ. So come, Father, and let us experience your presence. Now, together, we pray for those that are suffering. Yeah, those that are sick in homes and in hospitals. Touch them, Father, and where possible, change their conditions. And we think of those that are mourning because their beloved ones have been called into the yonder world. Please, Father, comfort them. And we know that when the souls are leaving this world, not everyone is innocent. So in grace, receive the souls that has been called into the yonder world. And there are many people that are passing through various difficulties. Father, be with them. And now we seek to be joined by the souls from the beyond. Those that are redeemed and are waiting for the return of your son, Jesus Christ, that just like us who are still living in this world. Let them join us so that we can experience this divine service together. And now we see connection with the chief apostle. Let his prayers cover us. Father, we can't put everything in word. Give us more than we can ask. Hear us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers, my dear sisters in the Lord, dear guests and friends, this morning I bring to you love and greetings from our dear chief apostle. I also had a conversation with the two retired district apostles, Duncan Mfune and Charles Nandula this morning. They were also sending their love and greetings. Greetings also from the apostles. And through these greetings, I want to lay in your hearts the peace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
And now the word from the chief apostle. From the book of Psalm chapter 84 verse 12. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. That is the word. Choir with orchestra who sing Home Sweet Home for the 6 CHC. Thank you, choir, the conductor, and the orchestra. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, dear guests and friends, in line with the hymn which has been sung by the choir, there is a saying in this world that there is no place like home. Uh, which means that home has got a special uh, thing that makes someone safe when he is there. There, there is security when you are at home. And you feel protected and you feel in control. You are not threatened. 
Because you were at your own home. But when you are away, then you can fear certain things. We are here in this world. We are visitors. Our security from the evil one is not guaranteed. And we are longing to go back home. Where we will be with the Lord. And when we are with the Lord, we we'll have security. Because the evil one will not have access to us. And it is very important, brothers and sisters, that we prepare ourselves so that we can be there when this sweet home comes to pass. And we have to overcome. The text today is talking about putting our trust in God. And that is very important for us to be at that sweet home. Putting our trust in God. There are many things that we can trust. But if we want to be at that sweet home, then we must put our trust in God. Now, Psalm chapter 84 is a song of praise. Praise to God. It expresses the longing to be in the temple. It is assumed that this song was sung by the pilgrims who were traveling to the temple. So while they were traveling, they had that longing to be in the house of God. And our Bible text this morning comes from the last words of this hymn. The pilgrims had trust in God. Why did they have trust in God? Because they had the knowledge of God. They knew who this God was. Therefore, the direction or the message of our divine service this morning is that trust grows from the knowledge of God. Now, with the first words that uh, we have heard from the Bible text, all Lord of hosts. The psalmist here makes reference to the care and the protection which those people who put their trust in God will experience. Now, since no one can guarantee us more love and mercy, Apart from God. So we can put our trust in him without reservation. But to trust someone is not easy. It is a process. You must know and, and understand this person before you trust him or her. And that is why when young people want to form a family or they want to get married, they go into what is known as courtship. During the time of courtship, they need to know each other. They need to understand one another. Now, from that knowledge of each other, and from that understanding, then trust is built. Then they can trust one another and then they can get married. Now, for us to trust God, we must have knowledge about Him. We must understand Him. And 
What do we need to know about God? I will mention a few things here. The first one uh, is that God is truth. His word is true. He is always fulfilling what he has promised. Think about what he promised Abraham. Genesis chapter 15 verse 13 to 14, we read what he said to Abraham that he would remove his descendants from slavery. And so after many years, the Israelites found themselves in Egypt. And the Egyptians were mistreating them. They took them as slaves. And God observed what was happening. Then he said, I have heard the grooming of the Israelites whom the Egyptians have enslaved. And I have remembered my covenant. And that is also written in the book of Exodus, chapter 6, verse 5. So God now sent Moses to go and remove the Israelites from Egypt. So the word which he had promised to Abraham, he fulfilled it after many years. So it doesn't matter the period that will pass. Whatever God has promised to be fulfilled. Because he is truth. For this reason, we can also trust in him and act according to his word. The second knowledge which we need to have about God is that God is almighty. He has infinite power. He has infinite authority. There is nothing which is impossible before him. Think about when the Israelites were crossing the Red Sea, when they reached the Red Sea. They were filled with fear. Because the Egyptians were advancing. And the Red Sea was full. There was no bridge there. And yet they needed to cross. What happened? God showed his almighty power. And so he made Moses hit the road on the water. And the water separated. And so the Israelites crossed on the dry land. You can go and read Exodus chapter 14. Start from this one. You can see the almighty power of God. And so the Egyptians also thought that they would do uh, take advantage of the lucky of the Israelites. They, they tried to cross, they perished. My dear brothers, my dear sisters in the Lord. So since we know that God is almighty, why should we seek help from elsewhere? Because time and again, when we are faced by the challenges of this world, sometimes we want to seek some powers from elsewhere. And we want to seek power from people who were created by the same God we trust. Let us trust in the God Almighty. And that is why the psalmist said in the book of Psalm 147 verse 5, Great is our God, our Lord, and the mighty in power. His understanding is infinity. So let us trust in the Almighty God. The other knowledge we need to have about God is that God is love. And his love for us is unconditional. He doesn't look at our social status. He doesn't look at our economic status. Whether we are poor or rich. He doesn't actually even look at our stature. 
Whether we are tall or short, fat or slim, or whatever attribute thereof, he just loves us the way we are. My dear brothers, my dear sisters in the Lord. And because of this love he has for us, he sent his son Jesus Christ to die for us. So that those who believe in him shall have everlasting life. Brothers and sisters in the Lord. And because of his love for us, he will not assign to us burdens that he knows that we cannot manage to bear. He is love. And his love is without deception. He has got true love for you and me. And his desire is that we should be with him in his kingdom. The other knowledge we need to have about God. God is righteous. The children of God who understand the righteousness of God we will strive for this righteousness. And wherever they find themselves, they will strive to do that which is acceptable before God. When they are provoked, they will put their trust in God. They will not seek revenge. Think about David. David believed in the righteousness of God. And so even when he was provoked by Saul, he did not revenge. At one point, he had an opportunity to kill Saul. But because he believed in the righteousness of God, because he wanted to be righteous also, he spared Saul's life. You can also read from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 7 to 8. The other thing we need to know about God is that he is gracious. The story in the Bible about the prodigal son depicts the graciousness of God. In the book of Luke chapter 15, uh, you start from verse 11, maybe up to verse 32, we read about this uh, boy or this son of this man who got part of the riches of his father. He wanted to have some independent life. And so he went somewhere very far. With time, he squandered everything he had collected. And he started living a miserable life. My dear brothers, my dear sisters in the Lord. Then he looked back. And he realized that the, his father was a rich man. And he, then he said, I'll go back to my father. I'll ask him not to treat me as his son, but just as one of the workers. What is it that motivated this son to think of going back to the father? Because he knew that his father was gracious. He was going to find grace before his father. Brothers and sisters, God is also gracious. When we go astray, when we do something which is not acceptable before him, when we think of returning to him in truth, he will apply his grace on us. And we are also expected to apply this grace on others who wrong us. The other knowledge we need to have about God. He is glorious. God is glorious. Those three apostles who went with Jesus at the mountain of transfiguration, they saw part of glory. 
Then they, they almost got confused. And we are making some proposals. My dear brothers, my dear sisters in the Lord, I believe we know that story very well. So God is full of glory. And his desire is to share this glory with us. Now let us uh, trust that he who is glorious will also lead us into glory. When this is the case, yes, then all these cares and afflictions of this world are meaningless. Because they cannot be compared to the glory which has been prepared for us. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17. Now we have this knowledge about God. Then we are going to trust him. Because we know him. We understand him. We will uh, trust him in all situations. But in a certain sense, we can also talk about God's trust in us. So he trusts us also. So you can see that this is a symbiotic arrangement. God trusts in us and we trust him. So each and every one of us have, has been entrusted with a talent. And this talent is supposed to be multiplied. And this talent is supposed to be used to glorify and honor God. And that is what God expects from us. He trusts us. He knows he has given us talents. And he believes and trusts that he, we are going to use these talents to glorify his name. Now the question must come to us. Do we use these talents to spearhead the work, work of God? Do we use these talents to help in the work of God or to help others? Or we use these talents to injure the work of God? Remember, at the end, we will be held accountable. We will be asked how we use these talents. And God has also entrusted us with something very precious. And that is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he expects us to use the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because it is also said that for everyone to whom much has been given, from him much will be required. That is Luke chapter 4, verse 48. Luke 12, verse 48. So God has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he is expecting you and me to use the Holy Spirit. To pay attention to the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. So we can work with the Holy Spirit by growing into the nature and the character of Jesus Christ. And with the nature of Jesus Christ in us, then we will always inquire the will of God. And we will make an effort to put it into practice. Knowledge about the will of God alone is nothing. But when we know the will of God and put that will of God into practice, then we can grow. My dear brothers, my dear sisters in the Lord, and with the Holy Spirit in us, 
We can also endeavor to do good things to our neighbor. God is counting on us to comfort those who weep. He's counting on us to help those that are unhappy. So let us show ourselves worthy of the trust God has placed in us. Let us not disappoint him. He trusts us. And he's expecting a lot from us. My dear brothers, my dear sisters in the Lord. This is the message for this divine service. Trust grows from knowledge of God. And what do we know about this God? We trust him because we know that God is truth. He is almighty. He is love. He is righteous. He is gracious. And he is glorious. And he is also expecting us to do certain things. He has given us talents. And he trusts that we are going to use those talents to spearhead his work and glorify his name. He has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he trusts that we are going to use the Holy Spirit and pay attention to his inspirations. And therefore grow into the nature and character of Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, when we do all these things, when we put our trust in God in all situations, when we pay attention to the inspirations of the Holy Spirit, then we will be ready for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when he comes back, he will receive us in grace. And so we will be with him forever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, this is a mock service as we know that the chief apostle will be visiting us. And we want to be as much as possible to be within the time. So the children's choir will sing Christ whose glory fills the skies. Christ whose glory fills the skies. And the distant apostle will help her will come and serve along. <laughs> My beloved in the Lord, dear brothers and sisters and dear friends, 
mwe bata mwipo mpumu ba munyana ba nkashi mwe bata mwipo ifibusa we have heard that trust in the in the lord grows out of the knowledge about him that he is faithful to his promises because he is mighty he is righteous he is gracious he also of glory that is beyond our imagination now the disapostle referred to the journey of those who were being liberated from slavery into the promised land. And he says it didn't take them long. They encountered the Red Sea. Uh, and the one who was a physical uh, providing physical leadership was Moses he also had no idea how they were going to cross the Red Sea but the only goodness was that he realized who the owner of that journey was and he didn't listen much or get discouraged by what was being said. Out of the trust he had, knowing I have just been sent, I don't know everything. He turned that to him. And we've heard here he was told what to do with what he had in his hand. Can you imagine, dear sister, dear brother, what the result of trusting God is when you encounter it yourself that he is worthy trusting. He has also Chetekela. talked about David's experience. So pursued him. And it says here he had an opportunity to borrow some words to finish him off. And he was also advised by people in his camp. No one else could have arranged this for you, David. It is God. And the reason is that you may finish your enemy forever. But because he trusted in God and in his provisions he was able to say who am I that I may raise my hand against the anointed of the Lord so that is where you've heard the disapostle say we trust him he also trusts us that we shall not do things which are against his will. Meaning, let us put the gospel of Jesus Christ into practice. So that we follow him all the way. Amen. 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 And the soloist, plus the choir and the keyboard, they will sing and play. I am but a guest and a stranger. And the apostle ran for the Simumwe who come and serve along. We all work in Baeka, na choir, na keyboard, wala imba, nendi umweni muisonde. No mtu michi Simumwe isa sende chikrocha.
my dear brothers, my dear sisters in Christ. My soul has been moved this morning by the ministration of the district apostle. And I said to myself, what a befitting preparation of our hearts and souls for the visit of the chief apostle. I'm sure all of you that opened your hearts, you have felt the same. We are grateful that we could be prepared. We are grateful that we could be made ready. Beloved, we all want to be blessed. All of us, we want to be blessed. And we want to be blessed by the one who has the blessing, our Heavenly Father. And we have been taught we have been told here we have to trust him. God the God of truth, God of mighty, God the loving one, God who is gracious. And the outcome, the result of trusting him we may not even be able to handle it if we trust him sincerely. Beloved in the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters, we want to trust also that he is coming to visit us and to bless us through his servant, the chief apostle. We want to keep that trust. We want to keep that knowledge. And we want to utilize that knowledge because it is the will of God. Like I have said here and there during the preparations. It's, it is possible on the day of the visit of the district of the chief apostle that you can be here in these grounds and not experience the Lord. And others are experiencing him because they have done the right thing. They have trusted him. They are experiencing the blessing of God because they have trusted him. So we want all of us to align ourselves to the will of God so that he can bless us in the measure that he has prepared for us. Amen. 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 The choir may not sing on account of time, but uh, the Bishop Mwila will come and serve along. Tuwakemba, tawa imbeka mula nduwa nshita, tuwa shikofu mwila, yesa alande kulia. My dear brothers, dear sisters, dear friends, dear God's children. Batemu kwa mnina, batemu kwa wankashi, batemu kwa mwefugusa, batemu kwa mweba na wakualesa. Certainly we all want to be blessed. To be blessed by the Lord. And we have been told what we need to do for us to receive that blessing. We need to trust in him. How do we trust in him as God's children? It reminds me what is recorded in the book of Proverbs chapter 2 verse 6. The Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge 
and understanding. And the disciples explained here that if you want to trust someone, you have to understand someone. If you marry that to the words in the Proverbs, then what we need to do is to get the word from our Heavenly Father. We need to get the word from our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ has given us the mouthpieces in the apostle ministry. And that word is coming from him, it's coming from God. My dear brother, my dear sister, let us listen to the word from the apostle. Amen. 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 My brothers and sisters in the Lord, I believe that uh, we have heard a lot. And I believe that we have been elevated in our faith from one level to another one. And so to end this sermon, uh, we are going to hear a hymn, the word of life. My dear brothers, my dear sisters in the Lord. Now it is time for us to be forgiven our sins. We know that human beings have fallen short of God's glory. And it is because of sin. We are naturally sinners. But when we say we need to be forgiven, this does not mean that we should go flat out committing these sins. Even where there is no opportunity to commit sin, you want to create an opportunity. You say, after all, there is forgiveness. No, that is not how this formula works. When we sin, let us sin because we do not know. But this human uh, flesh is, is a bit complicated. In most cases, we do those things that we know we should not do. Even when you are doing it, you know that but this thing I'm doing, I, I'm not supposed to be doing it. But you go ahead. That's not good. My dear brothers, my dear sisters in the Lord, now, for us to be forgiven, we must be humble. Think about the return of that prodigal son. 
He went back to his father with humbleness. And he said, don't take me as your son, but as one of your workers. He was filled with humbleness. Now, just imagine if he went there with arrogance. That I've come back. After all, you are my father. If you are not my father, you tell me, my father, then. I have come back, so I will be here. Do you think the father was going to forgive him? No, brothers and sisters. So when we go to God to express our sins, to ask for forgiveness, let us be humble. And let us also forgive those that have wronged us. Let us repent, brothers and sisters. Let us change from something to something new. And then the forgiveness will be effective. So as we reflect on those things which we have done, which are not acceptable before God, we are going to hear a hymn from the duet with the choir and the keyboard. Just as I am without one plea. Just as I am. Now we can all stand up and say the prayer which the Lord Jesus taught us.
Kulande chapa mo ipepo ilo Yesu Kristu atsa ndilishe. Tata Yesu, to you the glad tidings. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Your sins are forgiven. The peace of the risen one abide with you. Amen. Amen. Loving Father in heaven. We say thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. We know, Father, that even if you have forgiven us here and there, the evil one will manage to convince us to do what he wants. So give us enough strength, Father, to overcome. Where we have fallen. Please, Father, do not leave us alone. But call us back and lead us home. Thank you that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. Help us, Father, that our behavior as your children should defeat the sacrifice of your son. Be with those that are passing through various difficulties. Help them, Father. Let them rely on you. And your son, Jesus Christ, created the sacrament of the Holy Communion, which we are about to partake. We ask you, Father, to sanctify us fully that as we partake of this sacrament, we may do so with witness. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we are going to celebrate Holy Communion. And now the Lord's table is prepared. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I consecrate bread and wine for the Holy Communion. And lay there upon the once brought eternally valid sacrifice of Jesus Christ. For the Lord took bread and wine, gave thanks, and said, This is my body which is broken for you. This is my blood of the new covenant given for many for the remission of sins. Eat and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this wine, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. Amen.
the body is the blood of Jesus. It is our body. The body of blood of Jesus. It is our body. Amen. The body of blood of Jesus. It is our body. Amen. The body of blood of Jesus. It is our body. Amen. The congregation can sit. During Holy Communion as a congregation, we shall sing and, and can it be that I should gain in Bemba. Then we shall also sing when we meet in sweet communion in Nyancha. Thereafter we'll be guided. The Lord now invites you to Holy Communion. <laughs>
higher time of grace has come. beloved in the Lord, dear brothers and sisters. Among us, those that have proceeded us into the underworld, are those who put their trust in the Lord, and they still put their trust in the Lord. Our dear disapostles apostles then who proceed to serve them Holy Communion, as, a, as those who stand in their place, the process, it's Mambwe Mwitwa and the Joe Stambuli. As a preparation for this, there's a soprano solo with the keyboard. Or sing, sometime we will understand. Sometime we will understand.
my dear brothers, my dear sisters, with the introduction which has already been made, I now invite the congregation to stand. Now, Jesus Christ invites you who have come from the beyond. That come you who have remained trusting in God. Come, many of you who departed into the yonder world in the recent past. Come, many of you would have loved to experience the visit of the chief apostle that you will experience it from the yonder world. Come, many of you pioneers of this work. Come and receive that which I'm now placing in the hands of the two assistant district rectors. The body and the blood of Jesus given for you for your peace, for your joy, for your comfort, and for your eternal life. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. And now we we'll close with a prayer. Thank you, loving Father in heaven. Thank you for that which we have experienced this morning in your house. Help us, Father, that we can put our trust in you. That whatever we may pass through in this world, we should know and understand that you know everything. 
Yes. That one day you are going to deliver us. Loving Father in heaven. From here, we will be going into various destinations. Travel with us so that we can reach safely. Receive and bless the offerings of your children. And pay attention to the supplications that may have come along. Help those that are passing through various difficulties. And loving Father, we pray for the visit of our dear chief apostle to Kawe. There are a lot of things, Father, that we have to put in place. Bless your blessing, Father, on everything that is being done. That when that time comes, we can receive the blessings from your high servant. Bless your work and let it grow to reach the level that you desire. And always bless your children and help them. Bless your servants too. And help them, Father, to provide leadership and guidance to your children. And we also pray for the chief apostle that you may grant him whatever he needs for him to continue guiding us to the goal of our faith. Father, we cannot put everything in word. You know what we need. So give us much more than we can ask. Hear us, O Lord. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, to close this divine service with a hymn, we are all going to unite as a congregation in one verse of let your hearts be of ever joyful. very much, dear brothers and sisters. May God bless you and sustain your faith. Until we meet again. Bye! 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 Bye. Bye. Ah, we have got a slogan. We have got a slogan. Apostle? Okay, I think you had forgotten the slogan now I'm reminding you. Bye! Great. You can take seats, brothers and sisters. Yeah, those that you had forgotten, this is slogan. Your sins are forgiven.
Now let us hear from the choir. Lord of Lords. just want to re-emphasize about the chief apostle's visit to Kawe. He is coming. 
Alaysa. I was in touch with him during the course of the week. He is really geared to come and visit us. And even the flight schedule is already known. He has already booked his flight to Zambia. So let us continue preparing for his visit. So that uh, maybe we can experience the visit of the chief apostle in Kawe for the first time. Which may be a lifetime experience. So I wish you all the best. Let us continue praying together for the success of this visit. Uh, there's a request here from. Uh, two brothers and a sister. They are celebrating their birthday today. So they want the congregation to sing for them the birthday hymn. So I will ask these two brothers and the sister to come forward. But those who were born today and I have forgotten to inform the leaders, you can also come forward. So, District Elder Simushi Namasiku, you can come forward, then Sister Tuasi Munyenyembe, and Brother Munyinda. Brother Munyinda. Brother Munyinda. You can come forward. Where is the brother Munyinda? But this is open for those that were born today. If you were born, born if, you were, <laughs> if you were born like yesterday or tomorrow, please you can remain seated. So the congregation can rise and then the organist to lead us. So I wish you all the best and may God protect you and grant you everything you need to sustain yourselves in this life. The congregation can sit and you can go. 
you can see. Chikale. Stronger no chikale. Now as we go, you don't know about Walaya. Yeah? Uh, we are going to hear a hymn. I think this is from the choir. In the hollow of his hand, in his silos. Can we remain seated? Can we remain seated? Can we remain seated, please? As part of the preparations for the chief apostle service, a few observations that concern all of us. Uh, 